Hello, Gail. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Let me put that. The broadcast has started. So let's get that ticker off and let's get you on. All right. Here we are. Everybody's jumping on and saying hello. Um, so many people are excited about your presentation. Uh, I'm excited about your presentation. <laughs> I get to just sit here and watch, which is awesome. Well, you, you got to move the screens around. I do. I do. I'm going to move the screens around for sure. So... Speaking of which, let's uh, let me do a little bit of uh, that uh, 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 housekeeping, and then we'll just do it right over to you, Ms. Gale. Um, folks, as you know, this is our wonderful special guest for the Fall Fest for the Great Beat Extravaganza. Um, we have the wonderful Gail Crossman Moore, who so uh, very kindly uh, consented to join us for this Fall Fest. So we're super, super stoked to have her. So um, if you didn't watch the presentation that Gail and I did earlier, a little bit of a get to know you, Gail, on last Thursday, it's back in the video archive. So you can jump on and see a little bit more um, from that. Um, as some of you know, uh, I came back while I was on a, a, a record yesterday. I went to see Mr. Billy Idol in Las Vegas, but I'm back in my studio, safe and sound, and excited to have you here, Ms. Gail. So let me add, Gail, I'm going to add your store to the mix here real quick. Okay. So people can find where to shop for your great things. If you haven't gone on to Gail's website, let me uh, get you right here. There we are. Um, and you just click over onto shop and you can see Gail's wonderful, um, her pre-sale of this really great chain lariat piece. And Gail, you have some uh, color, different colorways, I think, which are looking at right here. I can highlight those. Mm -hmm. Look at how luscious those are. And you get all of the, um, all of the component parts, including these great uh, shapes that you're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. That's it. That is it. Really, really gorgeous. All right. So people can find Gail's um, uh, work and uh, the kit over at gailcrosmanmore.com. I'll show you that again uh, a little bit later, folks, after we get into it. But Gail, I'm just going to turn it on over to you and I'll periodically, if people have questions, um, I'll just jump in, uh, and ask them for you. Perfect. All righty. So let me spotlight your work table. I'm going to mute myself so you don't, so, you know, but feel free if you need me call out, I'm right here watching with intent. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> All right. There you go. Okay, so I brought these in to show you what's going on outside my house right now. Um, I live in the land of sugar maples, and they are giving us a show. It's fabulous. So we moved those aside, and um, we are going to get started on two parts. Um, I'm going to show you how I work on the opaque shrink plastic. Um, and how I work on the translucent. It's, it's different. I mean, it can be the same, but um, I want to show you that there's at least a couple of ways to do this. So um, I pulled my, the pieces I'll be working on out of a sheet, and this is the opaque sheet that I would send you. This is the uh, translucent that I would send you, and some patterns. And we'll get that out of the way. And I'm going to start by doing, finding my center. <laughs> That's a trick. And um, I'm going to just decorate these guys. Now, Gail, um, yeah. if I could ask real quick, the size of those shrink plastic that you have there, is that about a two inch or so across or even yeah. larger? Two, two and a quarter, I'd say. Okay. 
Okay. And cool. when it's when it shrunk, it becomes uh, basically an inch. So it's okay. um, um, is that possible? One, yeah, two and a quarter, mm -hmm. one and an eighth figure. About great. Yeah. So they do mm -hmm. they do shrink a bit. And then the other quick question is for you. Um, and it's left my brain. I'll pop in when I remember it. Never okay. mind. <laughs> go, go forward, Gail. Sorry right. about the interruption. So, so let me just say that um, I like to start with a true shape. So in this case, a dime would do it. Um, I made this little template. And um, actually, I'm going to go bigger because I have um, trying to center this. And I'm going to keep my pen perpendicular. I don't want to go underneath the stencil at all. And there's my circle. And you're using just a Sharpie permanent marker there. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. My favorite is, uh, for most of my work, is the ultrafine point. But I, I always have a thicker one handy, too, because I think variety of line is important. Great. Um, and... So I'll oftentimes just, once I've got it this far, it's much easier to divide up the shape. I might decide that it's easier for me to uh, determine the center between this and this. And then I'm just gonna go like this and like this. And you know what? It looks like it might be scary, but I have to tell you that um, you look like an architect, I promise. Even if your lines are all wobbly, it shrinks so much that it tightens things up. It's pretty great. So um, then I might uh, need to just find that little part. As much as you think you have everything you need. <laughs> you, you, you never do. So, Gail, these also come with pre-cut holes. Is that correct? Um, yes. That uh, holes in the center, which is mm -hmm. very helpful because mm -hmm. center is very important. Um, and if if you're cutting out your own, the trickiest, the way that I would find center is I would do a paper pattern also and just fold it up till I find the center. Mm-hmm. So I am going to trace just this little shape that came out of the center. So I'm using my piece as a stencil. And I always, you know, I just have a little baggie of masks and stencils. That is so clever. I always wanted to know how you got such really great lines and you use stencils that's amazing well no not usually i mean i do use stencils but right um this this drawing technique that i'm mm -hmm. showing right now is is what i do if i'm not using stencils mm -hmm. is i just break up the space you know a little bit at a time right and this all came you know this is this is an old practice of mine um i'm not a zen tangler but uh, when I was 13 years old, I started to do Pasanki, the Ukrainian egg art. Yes. And it's basically the same thing, only different. <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's, it's breaking up the space. So I would draw lines on the eggs with, with rubber bands and stuff to break up the space. That's so um, cool. Yeah. Now, this is what I think is important is... It would look way different if I didn't have that anchor of this dark area, right? It would just be airy. Um, I think it's important to, to ground your design um, with some solid spots. But having said that, I wanna caution you against coloring in the whole thing. On these opaque ones, it's not so much of a problem. But when we get to the translucent, it's really easy to add too much pigment and then you can't even see your pattern. So um, I can 
do just a little bit more of a solid here. And Gail, people will also be able to get, in addition to the kit, if you just want some of the sheets themselves or the chain itself. Um, yes. I will wait until um, this goes out to, in order to determine what I have left over for sale, mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, figure the, the end of this month when I send this stuff out, I'll know and I'll- You'll I'll know put, and you'll be able to put some more up. That's great. And with the kit, Gail, you also get uh, a link to uh, a video. So when people receive their kit, that video link will be in the instructions, folks, and you can just go in and and watch Gail's tutorial, or certainly come back and watch this tutorial as well, because this is all going to be um, archived. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you'll get double, double dose. Double. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop this one and go to the next one, and then I'll add a little bit of color to these two pieces. Um, and this guy, see, I get, I like to get rid of these dot, these lines. They, they really distract me. So, I just turn it over and start again. I um, some people, you know, just don't feel good about starting right out with this. So in that case, you might do it with pencil. I, I recommend this pencil. It's a paper mate sharp writer with a great eraser. It's just soft enough um, that the eraser takes away um, anything that is left after you say, I, I do it in pencil and then I trace over it in the magic marker. I can then erase my lines. Oh, that's a very clever technique. Right. Well, you don't there. always know what it's going to look like, of course. So it might even be that you, um, when you when you get this, I showed you you had the sheet. Um, if mm -hmm. you wanted to trace on the inside of them and design some of the things before you got going, you know, um, it just depends oh, on. Right. On that, how. Have like a little um trial run and trace them out. That's a great idea. Yeah, because it's not always comfortable to just jump right on it. You know. Mm -hmm. But um, so just a little more solidifying. And so these shrink plastic die cut scale, these are of your design. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. I designed the sheet to hold eight pieces. And the eight pieces are two of what you see right here, two of the other one I designed. And then there's a flat piece that goes in the middle. And mm -hmm. then, then uh, a little bit later, we'll sand them and glue them. Great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, you know, it's such a great format because these pieces can look so different from person to person. Um, but the, but the basic ingredients are pretty basic. <laughs> That's awesome. And then folks, what we'll do is we'll show you on Gail's site where everything is and how to get everything. We'll address all the kit issues or kit questions um, at the end. So hang, uh, hang tight on that. Um, so this is just that first step where Gail is, is coloring and making the, the, the spaces on the, um, on the shrink. Looks great. Thank you. Um, let me see what else I might want to do. Just a little bit of, we will, we have to decide where we're going to put some color. So I think in this little thing. Okay, so now you could use a number of things. Um, what I am going to use are markers. And once again, this is a Sharpie, but I use any alcohol m markers also. I also use stamping ink, which I will show you on these edges here in a minute. I like how that defines things. Um, you 
you see, I'm I'm uh, doing the, as Kate said, the Julia Child things. I said the Betty Crocker thing. I have a finished piece over here um, that I'm just trying to get something that coordinates with it a little bit. No, this is looking great. And I like the way, so you really are layering those colors. Right now, that looks like a, a pink that you're working with. Yep. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe I'll just do this. And put some olive green here. Nice. What I've learned from doing this a little bit is that you have to have the experience of doing one and understanding when it shrinks, how it feels like the colors that you put on there really intensify quite a bit. That's a really good point. And I, mm -hmm. I probably that's the biggest caution to anybody that's new to this. Don't color the whole thing in. As I said before, it before you know it, it's it's so compacted with color that you can't really make out your design even. You know what I mean? It The tendency is to want a color and to fill it in, but I'm going to ask you to exhibit restraint <laughs> and just start out um, with, with some line work. Oftentimes between these lines, I'll even leave some of the... Um, you know, some of the uh, the taupe to show either side of the pink. And it just helps it to stand out. Forgot that one. <laughs> Gail, are you drawing on the rough side or the smooth side? That's another great question. I am drawing on the rough side. And the rough side, you can, can handle most any medium you add to it. Whereas the smooth side, we have to be more careful. Um, uh... The only thing that works on this side are alcohol markers, Sharpies, and a little bit of, um, I like to do this. Stamping ink, permanent ink is what you want, not the, not the dye ink. And then you can stain the smooth side, which is really just nice. It's not, you can see it's not totally opaque. Maybe you can't because of the shine. But I'm just adding a little bit of color to it. Yeah, there you go. Because this is going to be a sort of an open part that I'll show you um, that people could see. Could see up under its dress. <laughs> That's right. So do yeah. you um, ever use colored pencils on this I, medium? I do use colored pencils. And I mm -hmm. certainly will use some on the uh, transparents when we get there. But, okay. I, you know, I'm apt to use them in any direction. I just didn't want to use everything on one so as to not confuse anyone, you know? Right. But this is probably my favorite thing to do is to give an edge color. So you can see that it's just a little bit, you know, darker. It could be a really contrasting color. Um, and I like to do it with either this or, you know, this kind of dauber. Um, this dauber is nice because you can change. Oh, I've never head. seen those. That's very clever. Yeah, just some um, Velcro holds it on. These guys are, I just have them in families, you know, so uh, the green family, the red family. Mm -hmm. And we'll go around. And it looks, Gail, like you missed the pink on one. I did. Someone's noticing. Oh, they're telling, I told you, but someone's telling me now. I guess that that's, means I better get rid of it. <laughs> that's right. Lauren and her keen eyes. That's right. She would just want to see if I was on the ball. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that edge painting is a great idea. Um, Debbie is remarking it's a great idea. It really is. And those daubers make it so easy to do it. What oh, yeah. Tip. Yeah, it's great. It covers area, you know. Um, and this ink would look very different if I was putting it on the rough side. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just very faint and fair here, but it would it would be intense pigment on this side. So there's that piece, although we have one more thing I want to do, and that is just kind of to give the tips here a little bit of life. And that was too much there, but that's okay. Oh my goodness, what a clever, those daubers are really handy. Yeah, they rock it. They really, really do. 
they make all the difference. Yeah. It gives it just a really nice tonal light touch. I love it. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. So Beautiful. now we have to add just a little bit of color to this guy. Um, and I want to... <laughs> Okay, to satisfy, we will move on to a colored pencil. This takes a little longer. And again, still on the rough side, correct? Yes, definitely. These pencils would not work at all on the smooth side. But if this were a marker, I could, I could use it on the other side. Mm-hmm. Oh, gotcha. Right. Because the marker would adhere to the shiny side. Yes. There's just a, a lighter coat. This just glides over the top on the shiny. Okay. So there's that. We'll do a pink stripe here. There's another question, Gail, as you're coloring that in. Do the gold leafing pens work on the shrink plastic? They do. Um, I would suggest you use them afterwards, not before you shrink. Um, they're, ni they're nice for edging also, but I'll tell you what I found to be the ideal pen for a really fine tip that um, won't disappoint are the Posca pens. Um, they're an acrylic pen, and um, the only thing I'm going to say is you don't want to color in full spaces with it. It's more for dots or lines. Um, it comes in several different tips. I like the 0 0.7. Um, acrylic paint, I've discovered. I've sprayed whole sheets of this thinking it would work. And uh, like, like, like Liquitex, um, it just bubbles up. So don't even try. Mm, gotcha. Um, so I'm that's... Gonna... Yeah. What's oh, that? no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say that, you know, it, it's... Um, that the acrylic pens are just really for details not for coloring in the whole spot gotcha. oh look at how beautiful that is and just so we're going to go over everybody again at the end of the broadcast about gail's kits and everything but let me just while she's doing that little that little brush the little brush, edgy <laughs> the little edging there you can find everything that gail's using you can find everything about gail right over on her website at gail crosman more and then if you click over to shop you'll see the pre-sale uh, for the shrink plastic um, and the lariat. There are still kits made available. You do need a couple more things that you can, and there's a, a link. Um, I'll show you where to get those. Uh, when Gail shrinks these down, um, she's also going to use a mold. So she'll talk a little bit about the molds in just a moment. So um, so just bear with us here, but that's where uh, that's where you can find these fantastic kits. And I will tell you, this shrink plastic is so much fun. I love your tip about working on that paper and then clearing it off, Gail. Oh like gosh. That. Yeah. It just, I, I need it this way. I mean, it's, in, I've gone through reams of it. You know, I should find a good use for it. Maybe I'll wrap because your kid also has sandpaper. <laughs> Maybe I'll wrap it in some of my used blank sheets. <laughs> gotcha. um, there's a couple, the pen brand is Posca. Is it P-O-S-C-A? That's correct. Yep. Okay. And, and then you the daubers, you can find the daubers at any, like, um, uh, just Michael's places. or whatever. Yeah, that yeah. sells rubber stamps and stuff like that. One last question, Gail. I'm sorry. You are have so many pe people are just so there's, you have over 200 people watching. <laughs> Woohoo! Hello, <laughs> <You're everywhere. laughs> Um, are the pencils oil or wax based or They're does it matter? Based. They're wax, wax based. based. Okay. Yeah. And so, you aren't looking for the cheapest ones you can find. You know, um, what I use are uh, Prismacolors, and they aren't the highest end, but they, they work very nicely. So um, I'm just trying to switch gears here on you and move on into the translucent because then we will shrink all these things up and put them together. Great. But so this is going to be done with... Um, Oh, oh, forget. Hold on. Hold no on. worries. I'll just go ahead and splash. While you're doing that, I'll put some some things up. Um, Zentangles would, you know, it's kind of that great um, way to make some really cute designs. That's what uh, Kimberly, uh, Kim Crawford is telling us. 
Um, let me also put back up, I'll add this back to uh, the stage here real quick while Gail is doing that. The, um, here's the, the, the pre-sale page of all the components, et cetera. So you can, you can find all of that there. Let me go ahead and remove that out. And sorry about that. Remove that one out and highlight this one. All right, we're back. Okay, so fun here, okay? Um, pastels work nicely um, and we've used them, but I was teaching in, I don't even remember where I was, but I went into the TJ Maxx and there was eyeshadow on sale and I thought, I bet that would work. So I went back to class the next day and it works beautifully. And wow. there's, there's, a, there's a few extra extra good things here, I think because it's probably pressed with a little bit of oil, um, it, it applies and stays a little better. Um, and then the colors, of course, are endless. The only problem is they don't usually mark the colors on, on the box. So you have to <laughs> stand there at the sale aisle and open everything up um, to see if it's a palette that you're interested in or not. Okay. We are going to use our and I'm just going to go lightly. I usually wipe it all off and you'll see, I mean, it looks like there's nothing on there in the air, right? Mm -hmm. But look at how much it really. Wow. Up. Right. Yep. Now, when it's, Gail, you're still working on the rough side. Is that, that correct? correct. Mm -hmm. Everyone is really thinking that the pigment idea is awesome. Uh, a lot of people use the eyeshadow for colorants. That's awesome. Yeah, they're great. I love them. They, and, they, you know, they do, they make such a, like a soft, soft thing. Yeah. So great. Now you are also applying it with that dauber. That's right. Yeah. The dauber is the deal. Now, here's a little bit of yellow. Open up. I think I'm done with this for now. They're big. That's the only problem for this little space. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gail, can you use the same daubers on the powders as you do on the stamp pad, or does it make a difference? Well, it's kind of interesting how the, the eyeshadow tends to cake a little bit. And mm -hmm. oftentimes, um, the beauty of the eyeshadow is uh, any of them that are metallic show up metallic. Whereas if you used a metallic pen, it tends to burn out. So that's good to know that that um, you can keep. Oh, you can keep the metallic. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but you'd use the same dauber on the stamp pad as you would in the eye makeup. Well. If you had a lot of daubers, I'd say no. But if you no, don't okay. have a lot of daubers, uh, mm -hmm. I'd say just stay in the family. You know. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm pretty careless. I have to say with my dauber usage. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to have a fresh one in arrears for your yellow. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now, do those launder or wash, or when they're done, they're done? What? Uh... What do you mean? Like oh, with, oh the with... daubers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could you could soak them and re and remove a lot of the color, mm -hmm. so that you'd feel more assured um, that the col the color wouldn't be in your way. You know. Mm -hmm. Now each of your little kits will get a stencil. Also, this is a uh, part of sequ a sequin remnant. Um, I have a few different sizes, so I put one in each of your things. Now this this piece is not going to show. Um, in the middle when it's finished because this piece is going to be bowed over it. So I don't have to worry about decorating too much in the center. I am going to get some green here and just Oh, get out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, right? 
Yeah, I'm just sitting here transfixed with my mouth open, actually watching the screen. <laughs> I wow, this is worth the price of admission. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> This has been a fun one to put together for sure. Oh, it's really great. You have said, you know, in your work and people can go on to the website, your website, Gail, to see all of your kind of past history of your work. And the work that you churn out all has this really, I think, organic kind of pod like feel. So even between various disciplines, um, your design sensibility is carrying over. I think that's so great. It's really just, you know, it's, it's, it's the same idea and it's just different materials. I really, um, yeah, I'm still trying to get at something. Don't know what yet. Maybe after <laughs> I've glued this together, I need to take it apart and, and the answer will be there. <laughs> well, it's really, it's really great. So you're adding some of this ink on the front and and on, on the shiny yeah. side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just did that on the shiny side to add a little more. Um, and then I'm going to do the edges in that pink again because mm -hmm. it needs to work. Oh, no, it doesn't work with that. Never mind. Wrong one. Okay. Pink. And again, that's a, those ink pads are permanent ink pads, not... Um, not... Not, not uh, non-permanent. That's, right. that's right. That's right. That's right. And I, I, I'm confused. I, when I say don't buy dye, I'm not sure that I'm telling you the truth. I do know that you'd want it to be permanent and I'm right. not and sure. Go ahead and uh, center your work a little bit, Gail. You're a little off screen. There okay. we go. Perfect. Thank you. Tend to get closer to my body. You know? I know I get that. So, uh, the project gets closer and closer to my visual <laughs> eye range. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go with that. And we are going to do um, maybe just this little guy. You're going to get the idea, you know, and, and in the video, I will go through all of the pieces. But mm -hmm. um, I just want to get to a point where I show you um, how to assemble this. So a couple of questions uh, about the inks. Stays on ink, I believe, is one of them. Yes, Is that's that right. Correct? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then that's one that I've also used in the past. And then you could certainly use a makeup sponge or those nice makeup sponges. You could use those as daubers as well, couldn't you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a bunch of, uh, I guess they're made for the computer industry to clean stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, with just different shapes of foam on them. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw those along the way in... You know, in looking for stuff, it's like, oh, I think that might work. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also you have the 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 sheet of die cut, right, Gail? So you could practice on the your waste sheet, couldn't you? Totally, and I I do do that. I um I will break out pieces off of that excess and mm -hmm. see see how the colors work. Mm -hmm. Um, before I jump all in, you know. Um, I want I want that blue again. So see that eyeshadow is so good. I know. I know. And I think some of you really will see when Gail goes to her next step to shrink, you'll really see how those colors intensify. That was really my downfall when I started working with these was I did just as you suggested not to do Gail. I just <laughs> colored and colored and colored. That's and what then, you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then I shrunk it and it was like a little blob of like nothing. You could made you sad, probably. It, it did. I was very <laughs> sad, but I learned, learned, learned. Um, Kim is asking, have you ever used acrylic paint to add color or is that too opaque? Okay. So the acrylic paint goes back to um, my comment earlier, which um, it, 
it bubbles up. It's incompatible. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I might've missed that too. If you want to paint on these, so I'll, I'll often spray paint, but not with Liquitex, you know, mm -hmm. I will spray mm -hmm. with, um, the, uh, hardware store, cry Krylons and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. They work, but the acrylic paint that, you know, Liquitex for acrylic painters, uh, not, not so much. Doesn't work so well. Peels off. I was wondering my why my neat green was really looking alligator-ish, you know? <laughs> and right. uh, okay, I don't need to do this. I wanted to do purple. So you know what? We're gonna um just add a little pink to this edge also. And then I'm just gonna shrink these guys up. Okay. There's another again, you're a little off camera. There you go. Um, the vintage um patinas. Um, I think that's a nay, not a yay. Is that right? Well, I, I would say nay for this stage of it. Right. And I can't really speak for what would happen at the next stage. Um, right. I will go back into some of these pieces that I've added too much pigment to and gone dark with. Mm -hmm. And that's where I found the Posca pen to be really helpful because oh. it, you know, it can bring light back into it. So mm -hmm. just with a whole bunch of little white dots, you know what I mean? It's gone mm -hmm. almost to dark. And if you could interject just some light life into it, it can bring them back. That makes so much sense. Gosh. Clever. And also, if they're really gone, if you have like um, tape down on your table um, and you put your, of course, when you want it, you cannot find it. I just want a finished piece. Mm -hmm. Come on, Gail. Okay, so I would glue this. I would I would put it on tape, and then I'd spray paint it white. Mm. And it would all come alive. And so you would completely obliterate the, or that white just gives it a little gives it a background so okay, gotcha. you know so so like the so you spray paint the back i see yes gotcha that's yep. terribly clever well so it, it would really go through to the other side right yeah so you have you have a background and that's the mm -hmm. that's the that's the issue that you need to understand about the translucent is um it can go to dark too fast and if you keep it light it's delightful um, so remember that little trick, but you do need the glue because I've done it without the glue and, and the spray paint just sprays it all over and does not do you any good at all. Right. Your little flower gets sprayed right across. The... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turns upside down and it's all white then. That's right. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be a little noisy, but, um, I am going to talk a little bit about how to shrink your pieces. Um, it's helpful to have a little vehicle here, whether it's a cigar box, whether it's this, um, something that will help your heat stay contained. Because just like anything that needs heat to move around, like, you know, if you're soldering, you could just need to make sure that everything's the same temp. Well, this is sort of the same way. It wants to be all comfortable relaxed and that's a little hard to judge sometimes so this helps helps you to know that the heat's contained now this is going to be the middle piece to the translucent one so i am going to shrink this if um the last time i did this it didn't project to you the sound um just know that i can't hear you while i'm right. doing this so just watch me i'm moving 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 the whole time um So, and right now, Gail is also using her heat gun. Uh, that's the heat gun she's using to paint it. As I always say, don't freak out. <laughs> it's kind of wild at this point. 
So the fact that I'm moving all the time is important. If I stayed in one place, uh, I tend to get that place too hot, and then it would have trouble opening that up. Sometimes I need to go in there and just do that. Come on, don't be stuck there. Oh, please don't. Okay. This won't happen to you. <laughs> it's just that I'm on the film, you know. Well, it's good that it's happening to you so we can see how to, uh, yeah. how to, how to fix just that. Just stop is important, you know, and assess. And um, if you need to peel something apart, do it. Um, you might not be as comfortable as I am holding it when it's hot. Um, and if that's the case, a little pair of gloves will help you out. Now and Gail, side, get it a little more towards center. Yeah, You're a little off. There you go. Wanted, um, I just want it to be flat. Yes. So I'm going to use this if it fits. It does not. Okay. I don't press hard when I do this. Just iron it a little bit. And then... So there's that. You can see how different it is. There's the shiny side. Mm -hmm. And then there's the matte side. Just That's a little more right. diffused, you know? Yeah. So then, yeah. can we talk just real quick about that's a, a heat gun that you're using, right? And That's it's, correct. Is it similar to an embossing gun if you were doing things with embossing powders on paper? That's exactly what you would use. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah it's called a craft heat gun. Um, you want it to, to be uh, 300 watts, not like the one that you cook your house with. Right. And the hair dryer, Gail, would be too not hot enough, right? You need a heat gun. You do need a heat gun, Yeah. And Marianne wants to know if that's a little silicone bowl you have there. It is. That's yep. very clever. That's not. I. I'm. I. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Julie has them for sale, you know. Oh, good. See, that's awesome. Yeah. So now you put the mold down, the bottom portion of the mold. Yeah, I, I don't need to have that spike in the middle because it's not doing me any good. Um, mm hmm. Come on, dude. Turn over. And we'll talk a little bit more about the molds and stuff and where to find all of those guys as well at the end. Now, this guy, uh, it's interesting. You'll, you'll see in time if you have any mishaps like I just did. It got folded over, and so it didn't fully... And it has a memory then. It wants to remember that foiled thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to tempt it to stay down until I press it. Come on. So these molds are two parts. There we go. I might have lost my heat, but we'll see. And they all have a different profile. Um, this is good for this project because it's broad you know mm -hmm. other ones are like this little guy is is just a little sweet little round half round bead cap mm -hmm. so if i had more time i would go back in here and i would i would reheat that because it got a little off but i don't want to take your time no, we're doing Good. fine on time, Gail. Are we? We've got, Good. We do. We've got plenty of time. We're doing great. Good. Great. Okay. So I have one more piece in that family to shrink. Um, well, I didn't do that yet. Okay. Never mind. While we're here shrinking, I might as well shrink these guys up. So the molds um, that you uh, that you're using, those are silicone molds, available on Julie Haymaker's website. We'll put that up. I'll get the link for that. 
Yes. Now here's, can you hear me when I'm using the gun or can you still? I can. Speak? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, Julie has all the gear. She has pre-cuts, not this particular pre-cut for this project, but other shapes and um, all the tools you could need. For this, for this particular job, you really only need um, the heat gun and the pink mold. <laughs> Interesting family of things here. When you work two days on something, trying to carry an idea over, that's how <laughs> non-disciplined I am. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. I didn't even need to make this, but that's all right. You saw me do it. Yeah, no, it's all, we're all good. Okay. So I don't have the other part to this right now, but I will. Um. We are going to shrink these guys. It's interesting uh, when I start a day's work, when everything's cold, how differently it behaves. When everything's warm, it goes so much more quickly and it's so much happier. Now, if you want to stop heating as soon as the shrink plastic stops moving on its own accord, you go too far. And what happens in particular with the, with the opaque is it wants to curl over. And you run the risk of when you press down with the mold that, that those edges would you know, be bent over. Oh, look at how pretty that opaque looks. Oh. Yeah, this so nice. this taupe is nice color. It really it is. is. It's it's antique like. I love it. So Gail, we have uh is this the last one you're shrinking? Yep. Okay, great. Is that that keeps us in time? Yep. And the only thing I need to show you then is how to sand, um, sand it. And basically what we're trying to do is to give some surface area to glue. Come on. <laughs> My mom is loving this. She says, we need the molds. Ma, I already have these molds. <laughs> Just come over. I'll bring my shrink stuff over after this broadcast. I'll be right there. <laughs> that, you know, it is such a beautiful thing to do multi-generationally, you know? Yeah, it is. My mom and, have, and I have so much fun crafting together and quilting. We do a lot of quilting together, which is super joyous. Now, are you guys hand quilting or... Um, no, we piece. We mm -hmm. do a lot of machine piecing, but we also do a lot of designing and stuff together. So it's a lot of fun. Moms. Miss Maya. The best. Yep. So I'm just going to go sort of in a circle. So what you put down there, <clears throat> Gail, is a, a square of sandpaper, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. And what grit is that? Um, It doesn't even matter. 400 but in your kit. No. Oh. Yeah, it's it's big. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you just kind of want it to go quickly. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see it, but those little tips, right? Um, you know, have been brought down so it fits more nicely on the surface of this. Also, nice. um, and does that sandpaper uh, come in the kit as well, Gail? Yes. Uh huh. It does. Great. Yeah. Um, and then we'll do the other one. Oh, no, I don't need to do the other one because this is my Betty Crocker time. <laughs> so when you're heating these, Gail, does the shiny side need to be up when you're heating or does it matter? That's your choice. Now, if I hadn't done anything to the underside of this, it wouldn't be very interesting if I put the shiny side down. Right? Um, it needed the ink, the um, colors to be on the side 
So I might have drawn on this, and then you can see down through it. So this is gotcha. on the clear side. But it doesn't matter when you apply the heat gun. If you apply it, especially if it's flat, it doesn't matter. But if you're putting it in the mold, you want to make sure that it's shaped correctly for the mold, correct? That's right. You want to make a decision on mm -hmm. on on your concave and convexity. Right. What right. What's going to be up? You know what gotcha. is going to be at the top of your. Of your but the heat face. doesn't affect the shiny or the um, um, rough side any differently. That's a good question. And uh, in a case like this, no. On mm -hmm. a case like the translucent, no. On a case that I I have had them spray paint this, it it changes the behavior a little bit, and that's mm -hmm. what that's when it's really more important to have a little chamber, mm. um, because you want you want them to get to the same heat and stay there as long as they can. Gotcha. So, um, you know that you just act a little differently to with the opaque versus the translucent. This guy needs to be sanded. And you're not pressing too hard and you're just going in a circular motion just to get that little bit of a rough edge there. That's right. That's right. I mean, this got quite a bit more in the short time mm -hmm. I did it. See that? Mm -hmm. All the triangle on the tip. And so now we, um, this will come in your kit also, is a little bottle of gel, uh, super glue gel. Mm -hmm. And it has a nice little applicator. And I just go around and add a little bit to that tip. Trying not to get my fingers in the way. That <laughs> is the big... Uh, the big thing. The big thing, right? Not yeah. to glue your fingers to whatever it is you're making. Right. Now, um, this guy, I, worked, I, I got this far before you guys joined me so that we could finish this. So... I did the mat side first, figuring if I had to reconfigure my glue, it would show up more on the mat side. So I just nailed it on this. And now I want to try and nail it on the other side. But the other side being shiny, it doesn't show up quite so much. So if I have to go in and move oh, it around. Oh, adjust it. I see. Yeah. It's better to adjust on the shiny surface than the matte surface. Yeah, just because, um, you know, on this side, I might even go in with nail polish if I had to get a whole bunch of glue all over everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. After it was dry, I might, I might um, run nail polish underneath. So that guy will sit to dry. Beauty. And then this guy, I didn't show you making it, but it's here. Now, will other glues work, Gail? Have you used E6000 and other things? Or is the super glue your glue of choice? I like it just because I get, you know, I have these nice small bottles. Mm -hmm. I did try this, though, and I did not like it, is the Gorilla Glue. Mm -hmm. What it did was it was it was so smooth that it kind of puddled. Mm. And so you saw the shiny marks around, mm -hmm. around it. Um, I don't know where the other one of these is. And maybe we don't need it because you get the idea. I would do the same thing. I have another right. one of these somewhere. Yes. Um, but then I'll show you how we do this. And this, yeah, is how, this is helpful if you have someone handy. And I'll tell you why. Um, I don't want to scrape against this if I don't have to. So it's helpful if someone holds it like this. Mm -hmm. And you, you can sort of just do this. So you and that's the bale. So you pull the bale apart and really carefully get it in the hole so you don't scrape the surface. That's right. And not so far apart. That's what you don't want to do. Right. You want the tension okay. to remain, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you've got this cool little thing. Oh. Gail. And that those little bales come in your kit as well. Yes, they do. They do. So now this is all you do. Say you have all your bits and parts. Um these little guys live this way and go a little more into screen. Yeah, there we go. And then this guy, 
I mean, could this be simpler to pop together? No. And I need those chains are just killing me. They are fabulous. They really are. They're just yep. gorgeous. I mean, I, 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 the real sales thing to me is the fact that they, um, you know, there's, there's no clasp necessary. Yeah. And so that I chain would, is fairly light. It's an open weave uh, rope chain. It's just gorgeous. So I would put the other one on this end. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you would just, what you can do because it's long enough to go around your neck twice, mm. which um, lets you wear it. So it looks like this. I just got super glue on the chain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> um, you know, the other one would live here like this. Right. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And those chains are fairly, from my experience, having seen them, they're very smooth. They're not a rough weave. They don't catch on anything. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, they don't even tangle very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, this isn't a finished, finished thing, but it gives you the idea. And um, with the help of, I think, the, the final video and... Um, no, it and looks great. The different yeah, this ones. chain isn't silver silk, just to let you folks know. This is kind of a vintage um, uh, metal chain that's been enameled, um, but it would work beautifully on Neely's silver silk for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Let me, uh, I have your finished thing here. You can see here, friends, on. Um, Do you want to show them the, uh, can you switch out of that to the other one that's that's for sale beside this that has the translucent? Yes. yes. Let me go. Oh, that this one go. right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just see they look quite different from mm -hmm. each other. Really, really nice. I love it. And so what you'll get again in the kit, <clears throat> pardon me, in the kit, you can select, you can see, is that on the, is that on the? It's down below. Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm on that, that, uh, that screen. So you can come in, you can select the option right here, mm -hmm. Gail. Yep. Yep. Um, and then you'll see it comes with uh, these you've already drawn on. Uh, your sheet will not have the drawings on them. Is that correct? Uh, not on the the plastic, but on the backside. So you, if you needed to use any of these designs, oh, okay, on your shapes like they correlate with the shapes in the in gotcha. The thing. Oh, yeah. great! So you do have a sheet like this that you can trace. That's right. Great, yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. You'll also get a a video, a link to a video. Um, that has everything that you need for that. Now, let me go over here. I'll share Julie Haymaker's site. Mm -hmm. um, it's juliehaymaker.com. Hopefully you folks can see that there. There we go. Um, and you can find all of her molds and things. You can explore all of this right here. She also has a great Facebook group um, and stuff. Yeah, come join us. It's called Shrink It, Shrink Plastic beads and art come it's, come be with us <laughs> yeah it's really great i love it let me take this out here um i think that's it let me get myself in the shot here yeah um so again folks you can find all of gail's things i'm going to put this here's the molds and supplies there's juliehaymaker.com and of course you can find all of gail's things right at gail crosman moore dot com um, i also i also have an etsy site which okay. um doesn't have uh, much to do with the shrinkets but it has a bunch oh. of findings and such that i've been collecting all of for all of these years um it's venerable elements oh let me etsy. see if i can let me uh is that on your main um yeah here it is hang on i'm getting that i'm gonna share this tab can we see that uh, hang on. Let me add this. Let me take this down. Let me go here. Uh, here. Here we, we go. go. Yep. And right over here is all of your Etsy <clears throat> thing. Oh, my goodness. That's right. Look at these. What? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we still on? Are we still live? <laughs> because I just, what those abalone beat just get. Get out of town. Beautiful. 
love it. <laughs> so there's a whole a whole life's worth of stuff to still go on there, but um, that's sort of where I'm moving it all to, I guess. No, oh, it's really great, great. Well, Kim says uh, she's only used shrink art with her students at school, and this is a whole new level of sophistication. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. And, and you know what I found, Kim, is, you know, the fact that you can get these molds to get it out of that 2D was my problem as an as an art, art teacher. I didn't want these things to be all so flat, you know? Yeah. The um, it's really that 3D effect is great. Lauren asks, Gail, do you do regular um, videos anywhere or tutorials? Where can people find more of you when they want more of you? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm really just starting on this track. Um, I have probably four or five kits on my Etsy site mm -hmm. um, that are taught on video. Um, and, and you do have a mailing list, though, don't you, that you can go and sign up for? Yes, and the easiest way to get on that is to go to my Gail Crosman Moore site, and a pop-up will find you. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So just go right over to Gail's website, sign up for uh, Gail's newsletter, and that is the best way to stay in touch. I agree. I want more Gail Crosman more. More. <laughs> more, more. More, more <laughs> is what I want. Well, you have had uh, almost 250 people watching you today, Gail. Oh, um, sweet. And people are so, uh, they loved it. Um, Tammy is saying, oh my, now I have something else I want to try. My craft room is going to be too full for me to get in it. Oh, but you know what? It's just a whole bunch of this size stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine in a little box. I'm going to pull mine out though. My mom, yeah. I think is going to call me after this broadcast and say, get over here with your shrink plastic. That's right. We know what to do on Sunday night. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Gail, thank you so, so much. And thank you for being a part of the great Beat Extravaganza Fall Fest. We're really grateful for you for sharing your art and sharing your ideas. Um, it's got me fired up. That's for sure. I'm so glad. It's been such an honor to be a part of, of your group this weekend. It's you know, I don't know if I'm describing this correctly when I've tried to tell somebody what this was, but I mean, I think, I think all you guys are probably 15 years younger than me is my thought. Well, I just turned 57. Okay. So not quite 15. Not quite. <laughs> 11. <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I never took to the computer, you know, so it's it's hard it's harder to catch up i think but you guys have all done it so i have faith that i can too <laughs> yes well we yeah you know it's just practice and it was so great to have you um you know yeah you just you know what technology is evolving we just embrace it and if there are mistakes that go i always say that doing a live broadcast is not for the faint of heart so uh Great, great job. Another quick question. Sherry asks, do you use black shrink plastic? Mm -hmm. Wish I could show you. I mean, this is the only piece I have within my fingertips, but this this was done with the Posca pen. Mm. Just those lines. I've done, you know, this whole this whole setup with um Oh, so the shrink plastic is black. Yes. Posca pens. Thank you, Sherry, for asking that question. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I had the sample, but I don't know where it is. So well, we'll uh we we get the idea for sure. Yeah, yeah it's wow. good. It's good because wow. that because the Posca pens come in bright colors too. Oh, they're so great. And the Posca is P-O-S-C-A pens. Yep. Correct. Michaels has them. Michaels great. has them. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, Gail, we have used up our time perfectly. Great job. <laughs> so friends, you are going to see uh, Christy Friesen here to wrap up our whole big Fall Fest event. We're also going to announce the dates for our winter uh, uh, segment that's coming up in January. So we're going to be able to see that and you'll be able to see that and it'll be in the uh, Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group. So you can mark your calendars now. And Gail, give us the name of your Shrink Plastic Facebook group just one more time. 
I believe that it's shrinkets, shrink plastic, beads, and art. Excellent. If you well, just put shrinkets down, it'll. I think all the rest will come clear. You'll find it. I think there's a link over on Julie Haymaker's website. I think there's also a link to the Facebook group. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, thanks again. <laughs> yes. Thanks again, Gail. It yeah. was fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you, all of you folks, for watching. And stay tuned for Christy Friesen. <laughs> She'll be on uh, in just a few. Thanks so much, everybody. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, all. It's been fun. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.